You know, we don't come to, sometimes I believe we come to praise men. Now, fancy somebody can preach or what they can say. We forget about what we come to church for. That's to come to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. I ain't never, praise the Lord, I ain't never, nor will I ever. Try to take God's glory. Come on, come on. Because he is the reason. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's got our very breath. In his will. Our very heartbeat. Yeah. Is only by his mercy. Yeah. By his mercy. Yeah. By his mercy. Yeah. But the Bible says it's great. His mercy. Endureth forever. Yeah. Thank you Jesus. And I tell you. I, without it. Neither you or me or praise the Lord. Where would we be today? Where would I be without Jesus? Praise the Lord. I tell you where we would spend eternity. We would spend eternity separated from God. Amen. In a hell. Praise the Lord. There is two kingdoms today. As the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, and that's the kingdom of the Antichrist. Amen. There ain't but two, there's none in between. That's right. Praise the Lord, there's nothing for us to add to or take away from. Amen. It's just plain and simple. Either you for us or you against us. Go ahead, brother. Jesus has an army today. Yes. Praise the Lord. We either for that army. Of, against that Joshua looked over there before they went and praise the Lord before they went to march around Jericho he seen a soldier yeah. standing the Bible said he was standing against the wall Joshua recognized there was something different about that soldier mm -hmm. and he had to ask him uh -huh. who are you for sir Come on, who are you for sir oh, we yeah. get ready to go into battle today who are you for, sir? Uh -huh. And he began, that spirit of God that was in him began to recognize a little bit at a time that he wasn't talking to no ordinary soldier over there. Uh -huh. And he realized real quick yes, sir. that he had to take his shoes off. That's it. Oh, oh. Because that soldier over there, everywhere in the Bible where you see where God told him to take the shoes off. Yeah. God was there. That was Jesus sitting over there suiting up, getting ready to fight. That was the Holy One of Israel getting his sword and his shield ready, praise the Lord, getting ready to go with uh, Joshua to defeat, uh, go around and march around Jericho. But he recognized that there was something different about that soldier. So he just sighted him out. There was a bunch of soldiers out there. There was a bunch of soldiers out there today. You know that? Mm -hmm. But you're going to got to be somebody that, praise the Lord, that some another soldier, uh, 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 a child of God, recognizes you. My God, whose side are you on, soldier? That's that soldier you walk by in Walmart, you say, wait a minute, praise the Lord, sister. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. You know, there's something different about that soldier. It dressed a little bit different, talks a little bit different. Whose side are you on? It's time to know today whose side are you on? Look around the church world. And pre preaching the doctrine, it said you ain't got to take sides. But I hear the tell you today, you got to take sides today. You got to choose this day who you're going to serve. You can't serve God and man. You got to choose this day, church, who you're going to serve. They said if you're hot or cold. I ain't going to spew you out. But if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Because you're not sure who you're going to serve. Today, choose you this day, church work. Who are you going to serve today? Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve the devil? There's two kingdoms today. 
One, the devil controls. And one, God controls. In the end, God controls it all. But to God just lets the devil have his kingdom right now. And he's gathering as many as he can. Choose you this day. Who you going to serve? I'm going to serve God. What about you? But as Joshua looked over there. And he said. Soldier. He said, who are you? He said, I, I can't even remember how he said it. He said, but I'm the chief of the Lord's army, the captain of the Lord's army. He said, take off your shoes, for the ground that you're standing on is holy. I believe right now that you're a true child of God, that when you walk around on the ground and you've got the Holy Ghost, and you got Jesus in you, the ground you're walking on is holy. We heirs and joint heirs with Christ. He said, I didn't hold nothing from you. He said, things I do, you can do too. And great. Jesus didn't keep nothing from us. But what he did, he said, I give it to you, power. Power over what? The enemy. Power over the devil. Power over anything that he can come up with. Yeah, right. Power over any lie or cheating or, or any, any conniving old mess that he tried to throw on you. Amen. Praise the Lord. He can come in the church one way. Praise the Lord. By the time he turned, he had the church so tore up. Because the people ain't praying and doing what they're supposed to and let the devil in. He come out and tear the church all to pieces and he'll leave out smiling. But it's time to church. It's time to look around and see whose side somebody coming in the church is on. This time, I didn't even have this to say today. Praise God. Ain't on my notes today. But it's time to look around and look at the brothers and sisters. The wolves that's disguised themselves in sheep's clothing and to see whose side are you on today, brother. church being tried and tested. But how they test it, you know, the first thing the devil will test is your love. And he'll use your love against for your brothers and sisters to come in and deceive you by that soft heart you have. Instead of looking at and testing your brother, your sister, or the stranger by the Spirit of God, you want to go in and use your love that you have for man and just don't even listen to the Spirit of God. You let that fleshly love go in there and allow the devil come on in. Yes, sir. You let him come in and destroy your church. Come in and let him destroy your marriage. You come in and let him destroy your friendship. Come in and let him destroy all that he can destroy. He, he, is, he is a roaring lion. He said, I'm seeking who I may devour. And he goes to and fro. And, and, and if you think that as a church member that you exempt, praise the Lord today, you're the first target he comes to. You're not exempt, praise the Lord. You better ask God for eyes to see and ears to hear and a mind to understand what he's trying to say to the church today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Test him, taste him. See that he's not good. See if he's good today. The Lord always wants us to test the situation, to prove a situation. When Samuel, you know, he sent for, you know, David come out there and had been, my God, and Goliath had done talked to the whole Israel man. He done told them he'd been out there a long time and, and word got back to Daniel. Yeah. He heard about this big giant out there running God's army down and he didn't like it. He knew whose side the lion was on Amen. because Daniel had the Holy Spirit of God yes. to get God him. Amen. David knew that that Philistine 
was a foul creature. Go ahead, brother. He knew that Philistine was of the devil. Right. And when he went out there, praise the Lord, he went and, you know, he went out there and just claimed he was going to take them something to drink and eat, praise the Lord. Yes, sir. But he was trying to find his way to the back. I believe God got some people right now trying to find their way to the back. I believe he's got some folks, some children of God is trying to find their way to the battle, trying to find some way to fight today. Have you got some fight left in you today? Have you got some, praise the Lord, some Holy Ghost energy left in you today? I got some fight left today. David, praise the Lord, he got on down there for that. And you know, and then he proclaimed, he told him, he, he said, I don't know what y'all sitting around here for, but that old John out there, he talking to y'all mighty bad. Y'all know what side he's on. Whose side are y'all on today? Y'all know he's on the thing of uncircumcised Philistine. I know he's thinking, my God, it's the devil out there. He's in tone, y'all. Don't y'all serve God today? Don't you serve God today? We serve a living God today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord have mercy. Come on, listen. Oh, here on the first Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You gotta know who's on your side today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The 17th chapter, 1 Samuel 17 chapter. And 32. Praise the Lord. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. He said, y'all don't worry about it. I know who's on my side. Do you know who's on your side today? And whose side are you on today? He said, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. Listen to that. I'm going to tell you, church, I'm going to do what works. Go ahead, brother. You know what? God has proven himself over and over and over to you yeah. and me, and we know what works and what don't yes, work. Yes, sir. you got people been serving God for 30 years and turned their backs on God, and he never failed. Going to another religion, going to another way, and that other way he proved himself at all. God has brought you this far. He has proved himself over and over, and there ain't no results in what you're trying to follow. We got to prove God. You prove him, he'll prove himself. He ain't got to prove nothing to us. We owe him everything. He don't owe us nothing. We owe God everything today. He don't owe us nothing. Thank you, Jesus. He said, David, and David said to Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took the lamb out of the flock. And I, I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard. And I smote him when I slew him. And he's telling Saul this. You know, and David, you know, David said, I encourage myself. I believe at, a, at that moment in time, he was pumping himself up. I believe he was exhorting his victories in Jesus. I believe sometimes we just gotta tell him, tell the devil, say, devil, I went you last time with the blood of Jesus, and you can't stand before me this time. I remember when I grabbed you by your beard. I shook you and I slew you last time. You ain't no match for me now. Let's do what works, Trey. Brother Brian, we know what works. We done been.
been proven over and over again. Why is folks trying to go out here and get something else and ain't proven nothing? It ain't never brought you out. It ain't never give you the victory. It ain't never give you joy. It ain't never had no, praise the Lord, no effects on your life or your children. Praise the Lord, it ain't done nothing. All it is is another way. Ain't proven nothing. I'm going to do what works. Woo, hallelujah. He said, Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. Mm. Yes. David said, I'm going to do something that has worked for me before. Uh -huh. God has proven to me that he can deliver me Woo! out of the paw of the lion. God has proven to me that he can deliver me out of the paw and the light of the bear. Praise the Lord. That's something that God has proven to each and every person in here. He's proven it to the world. He's proven it to the church. Praise the Lord. And the church is still looking for another way. What's God got to do more? What's he got to do more? He delivers us out the line. He delivers us out the bear. More than one time, praise the yeah, Lord. And he'll do it again. God is an old time God today. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, David said, more of the Lord that delivered me out of the part of life and out of the part of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Yeah. He's just telling David, Get on out there. Let's see what you made out of. Ain't nobody here got the nerve to go out there and fight. Because you know, ain't what nobody there that have no memory. They forgot what God had done for them. God had fought all their battles up to this point. What? Why would he change them? They lost their faith in God, praise the Lord. But David, praise the Lord, he was singing about the lion and the bear. He said he'd done that. He'll do it again. God done it for you before. He'll do it now. God stirred you up before. He'll stir you up again. God stirred your life up before. He, he set your fire. He'll do it again, praise the Lord. He's already proved himself one time. He's already proved himself in your, in your life, in your finances, in your children's life, in your home life, on your job, praise the Lord, in your church. He did all these things for you. Why you want to turn your back on? Let's do what works today. Now, I don't know. I don't know if Catholicism works or not because it ain't never been proven to me. But I know it's the Holy Ghost to do. I don't know, praise the Lord, I don't know what the Muhammad to do, but I know what Jesus to do. Because I done proved it before. He done delivered me out of a lion's mouth. He done delivered me out of a bear's paw. He done delivered me out of the belly of a whale, praise the Lord. God has delivered me. I'm going to do what works today. Hey, what you trying to figure out a different way, trying to figure out a different method, a different style, and all the while you forgot what, what you got you to this point. You forgot about what got you to the day. It works today, church. It works today. I ain't looking for no other way. I'm not looking for no other method, no other idea. Praise the Lord, an easier route, another way around, this way, around, that way. You know, it takes more time to find a way out of work than to go ahead and get the work done. You know? Your child, you spend all this energy, half a day, to figure out how to get out of a 30-minute job. All day long. Then just go ahead and just do it, get it done with it. 
It's already been, just do it. You know what to do. Just go ahead and do it. Praise the Lord. Same thing you done last week. Same thing you done two weeks ago. Your same old chores every week. Praise the Lord. If you've done it before, you know how to do it. You know how to complete the work. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it today, church. Let's do it. What God has proven himself to us to work. Fasting work. Prayer work. Getting along with God work. Denying yourself work. Denying, praise the Lord. Denying yourself and your, and your flesh, praise the Lord. Don't let your flesh take over your life. That's what works today. Taking up your cross is what works. It's been proven to you. Each and every person in before, when you, when you uh, uh, took up your cross, it's proven itself to work. Let's stick with what works. Thank you, Jesus. And Saul, I like this right here. And Saul armed David with his arm. And he put a helmet of brass on his head. I can just see him now. You no know, Bible says Saul was way taller than everybody else. Yeah. That's right. Head and shoulders higher than everybody else. Yes, sir. Saul's armor was big and bulking. And then come David, he would just, just mind his father's sheep. He was in there ready to, on fire, ready to do something for God. And, and plop, there come a big helmet on his head. Come on. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Come on. So sometimes you got to get your own dedication. Come on with it, brother. The preacher's dedication ain't going to work for you. Your brother or sister's dedication ain't going to work for you. You better go and get something for yourself. Yes, sir. Right. Go ahead. Their helmet neck dedication might be too much for you to back. Go ahead, brother. It might be too much you can't fight. You can't tell what they've been told me. You criticize and run a mouth about them, but they plop their dedication on you, you lose your mind. You plop all the, 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 the trials and tribulations they go through on your mind, then you'll be over there in the corner somewhere sniveling and crying. You better get a hold to your God for yourself. Get your own power. Get your own dedication. Get your own anointing, praise the Lord. You better go out there and get your own sword. You better sharpen your own sword. You better go out there and get your own shield. You better polish your own shield. You better go out there and get your own slingshot. You better learn how to use it, praise the Lord. Because I got to use my slingshot. I got to use my sword my own self. I got to use my shield my own self. I got a battle to fight too. And praise the Lord, I help you fight as long as I can. But you better do something to help yourself. My dedication is my dedication. I don't mean to be selfish, but we got to get our own soul salvation. The Bible says it with fear and trembling. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, and Saul on David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass on his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. He got, he figured out, man, ain't no way I can do nothing like this. Ain't no way. I, I ain't never put this home before. I ain't never told it this old big stuff before. For he had not proved it. David didn't have no sword when he was out there with the bass and lions. He didn't have a shield and a, and a coat of mail and a helmet on his head. All he had was the Holy Spirit of God. All he had was a Bible don't say he used that slingshot on it on the back of the line, but he had that slingshot. He was familiar with that slingshot. How many has got a slingshot today? How many has got a slingshot? And are you familiar with it today? Have you put some stones in your slingshot lately? Have you wound it up and have a little target practice lately? Have you been practicing with your with the have you been praying? Have you been fasting? Have you been getting along with God? That's your slingshot. You know what your slingshot is? That's your dedication. 
That's the Holy Ghost. You got to, you got to learn how to use this stuff. You got to get in practice. And you got to, you got to go to the devil and say, you, you got to practice. Fighting the devil. You got to practice. You got to do something. I would say faith without works is dead. You got to practice this. You got to speak to the devil. You got to swing that swing shot up sometime and throw it out there and say, here come, devil, whether you like it or not. Faith without work is dead. You can say you got faith, but you don't ever use it. My God. We can say it all day long. You carry your slingshot all day long and talk about how good you are with it. But praise the Lord until you get it out and show somebody they ain't going to believe. Especially the devil. Thank you, Jesus. Well, he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with you. For I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. I tell you what I don't know. I tell you what I do know. I don't know if a psychiatrist will work. But I know Jesus will work. I don't know if the hospital will work. But I know Jesus will work. I tell you what. I can go out and tell a drug addict. I can't tell a drug addict rehab will work. But I can not tell a drug addict that Jesus will work. I tell you why. Because I done proved Jesus will work. Over and over and over again. I know he'll work. I know this slang shall work because I was targeting. I was out there with some target practice. I praise the Lord. I fed my family with this. I, I, I defeated my flock with this. I know it'll work. They can just go out there. Scared. He didn't go out there scared. There was no fear in his voice. All they done, you know, a lot of times we just do things for a preacher friend of ours or, or your sister, your brother, or somebody in your family. Come go to church with me. You go visit a church here or there. Or you go here and try this and you entertain a little bit more than you should have entertained. That's what they're doing. They're putting that armor on you. They're putting that helmet on you. They're putting, they're giving that old sword and that stuff. Praise the Lord that you don't even know nothing about it. And all it's doing is weighing you down the way you can't even fight them. It looks good to the eye. Don't you know King Saul armor looked pretty? That was the king's on. It was probably gold and shiny. It probably was just the most beautiful stuff. Praise the Lord when he put it on, it would have looked like a, just a regal thing walking out there. You know what? But it ain't. It mean nothing to me. Just like it ought not mean nothing to you. This old church well they want to put you, this old shiny stuff on you that ain't even worked before. This old shiny armor that ain't even worked before. You ain't proving it, and they ain't proving it either. All it does is just sounds good. It's real shiny and it looks good. Praise the Lord, the hair is a, he said it was brass. You don't know that, that helmet was shiny brass. But they ain't proven it. But you proved yours. And how are you going to let somebody else throw that unproven gospel on you when you have proven yours over and over and over and over again? When you have proven this gospel of Jesus Christ over and over and over again, and you're going to entertain that shiny armor over there on you when all it does is weigh you down. Let me tell you something. Let's stick with what works. It ain't complicated today. If it worked before, let's do it again. If it worked before, if it brought us out, Brother Allen, before, let's do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I have not proved them, and David put them off. And he took his staff in his hand. He was familiar with that staff. That's what he used out there with his flock. He fit his hand just right, and it was just the right height, 
you know, he could, he could walk with it just right. He would just felt comfortable with it. He knew just how to walk with it. It's my staff right here. Yeah. Just how to walk with it. Just, I done proved this right here. I know just how to walk. Felt just right. Felt good. Right height. Right weight. Praise the Lord. Just right. He knew that staff would take him. He, he had to get himself back squared away. First, he got a staff in his hand. And he went down to the brook. Well, they got a staff in his hand. Now he's walking. He's talking to himself. Well, I got to get down here. I'm going to show them. They think that they, I ain't going to, I can't believe it. That old Philistine running his mouth that time. And I would be the a, a lion. And I whipped the bear. And he's out there talking about my Lord's army like that. Lord, show me where you can take it down here, Lord. And show me what stone to pick up. Show me where to go down here and, and choose the right stones where I can go here and sling it. And this sling shot up and use it. Praise the Lord. And, and let me show you what stones to get where I can whip this devil. I know he was praying all the way down there to the group. Praying. Oh, Lord. I'm going to whip this giant today. Oh, I remember. I remember the line. Oh, Lord. I remember the bad, Lord. Oh, Lord. I know you done chose me, Lord. Oh, Lord. I know you done anointed me, Lord. It don't matter. Oh, Saul, he tried to put that old stuff on me, Lord. I know if it's your will, Lord, you would have made it fit right. Lord, but I know today that that armor don't fit right. Praise the Lord. I know today. Praise the Lord that I know you got some stones down here for me. I know you got some ammunition down here for me. I know you got a blessing down here for me. I know you got some anointing down here for me. I know you got a word down here for me. I know you got some peace down here for me. I know you got some joy down here for me. Glory to God. Going down to the brook. Going down to the brook. You know, he knew where to he knew where to go to get the right rock. We went down to that brook. You know, we got to know where to go. To get in touch with God. We got to know where to go to get something from God so we can fight the devil. He said he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook. And he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Even in a strip and his sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Philistine came out and drew near to him. And the man that bare the shield went before him. The Philistine looked out and saw David and he disdained him for he was but a youth. And Rudy and a fair count. It don't matter what you look like today. Yes, sir. It's what you got in your bag. It don't matter what you Praise the Lord It don't matter how people portray you uh -huh. What you seem to be to man today It's what you got in your sack today uh -huh. It's what you What ammunition you got in that script That God just sent you down there He just sent you down there and get your five smooth stones Yes sir He didn't send you down there for nothing He sent you down there to get something that you know works Praise the Lord. It'll work today. This Holy Ghost will work today. This Holy Ghost will work today. Everybody in here has been, been a part of God moving. Everybody in here has seen God move in a mighty, mighty way. Praise the Lord. You know what it took to get to that point. You know where you was and you'll walk with God then. Let's get back to where we were. Go ahead, brother. Because we know that will work. Yes, sir. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But we got to prove. You know, he David could not go out there and fight the devil in an unfamiliar way. In the world, in this, this message that the world is preaching today, you know it and I know it, ain't none of it been proven. Amen. None of it. You know why I say it? Because there ain't no miracles in it. Go ahead, brother. Right. Ain't nothing in it. I ain't heard of it. Ain't no casting out devils in it. Yeah. Ain't no healing the sick in it. Amen. Ain't no dedication in it. Ain't nothing in it. It ain't proved nothing because it ain't can't prove nothing because it can't work. That's right. The Holy Ghost is proven to you and me many times over that it does work. Dedication does work. Fasting does work. Prayer does work. Your, your aloneness and humility to the God above works today. We can't do nothing without Jesus. We can't walk without Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. No one who's in the military that would take these new weapons out to different areas of the country. And they would rope them off and have thousands of acres out there. And they would take these new weapons over there and they put old targets and old tanks out there. And they would take them out of what they call the proving ground. And they would take these new things that they was trying to see if they would work in battle. And they would go out there and have war games and shoot them out there and if, see if they would work or not. See if they would perform yeah. the way they intended and they designed them to perform. Go ahead. And some of them performed. Some of them got proven. Mm -hmm. And some of them didn't. Let me tell you what today, the Lord has never been proven wrong. Go ahead, what you listening, praise it, this word of God that we follow, this Holy Ghost that leads us, it ain't never led you wrong. Amen. It ain't never led you in a place, praise the Lord, and left you alone. It ain't never took you in a, in a battle and turned his back and left you there alone. It ain't never took you down somewhere, praise the Lord, and got you in a fight. And run off and left you without taking up the slack. Amen. Oh, your hat and friends go and pick a fight. You know what I'm talking about. Friends go and pick a fight. And they get y'all in it. And turn around. And they don't even know what I'm fighting for. Get it all stirred up and they go on. And you left right by yourself. You're going to call yourself taking up for them. Everybody had their friends like that. Oh. But Jesus ain't that way. Come on, brother. And you're going to get in a fight with him, he's going to stay to the end. Yes, sir. He's going to stay until the enemy has been defeated. He's going to stay, praise the Lord. You ain't got to worry about Jesus turning his back and running. You ain't got to worry about the Lord leaving you alone. You ain't got to worry about him getting a place and picking a fight with the devil and looking around and saying, my God, what's going to happen here? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's all part of proving God. You know he'll prove your life. You know he'll stick in the plan with you. You know he won't. You're going to turn around and he's going to be gone. Because he's going to be there till the end. The Bible says, he that endureth to the end. That's the one that's going to be saved. I have no doubt that when Noah, all them years he built that off, I have no doubt that people come along in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah, they had to. I know God could have. But I know that people came in and helped him. After all, they lost their faith. It didn't rain in time enough for them. No doubt they carried a few boards and built the kept and built the ark. Ain't no doubt about it. I feel in my spirit. No doubt about it. They came in heaven. But you know that wasn't an eight that was saved. Because they endured to the end. 
They endure. You look around these seats today. You'll see them come and go. You'll see them come and go. Them churches here and there, you'll see them go in and out. In and out. In and out. They come in and help you and get on fire for God and do something for God. Praise the Lord while they're there and really be a help. They dwindle off out because it didn't rain quick enough. It didn't, you know, nothing didn't happen fast enough for them. Revival didn't break loose fast enough. Come in and out, in and out. But one day, saints, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You know, Noah didn't have no doubt. No doubt that Noah, he was so close to God, he had proven God. And God had proven himself. Noah was sticking what? No, no doubt. Man, that was a long time. Building a, a boat to do something that never happened before. It seemed like it, it was crazy to the man. What we preaching today ain't never happened before. Jesus ain't never come back before. But he is. They'll come in and out and in and out waiting for Jesus to come back. But he ain't come back fast enough for them. So they're out there. But you know, some of them that was out there. When it started raining, they recognized that their patience, they should have waited a little bit. There'll be a bunch of them to look at you and say, I wish I'd have waited a little bit. Some of them will look at God moving and where he's moving and no doubt he's going to move. No doubt there's a revival coming that will supersede everything that we've ever seen before or ever heard about in the Bible. No doubt it's coming because God's word said it would. But let's don't just come in because it don't happen fast enough. Go out there, and then when it starts raining, you're looking in and can't get in. Yes, sir. God has proven itself. Yes. He's proven itself that this does work. Go ahead, bro. Why would he work in one way and not in another? Why would he fulfill one part of the word of God and not fulfill the other? Yeah. Let me tell you, boys and saints, he is going to fulfill it. He's proven itself to us. He's proven that what he does works. How he works, works. The way he works, works. It just works, praise the Lord, because it's God. And no matter how we figure that his way may not be just how we want it to be, it still works. You know why? Because it's God. And his will is always right. Yes, sir. Thank you. I don't want to be on the app because it didn't come fast enough. I don't want to be out there. When the rain drops off, falling oh my Lord. But I can't get back over there. I can't get back over to the ark. I knew. I helped him for a long time. I stayed in there a long time. I cut a mini timber. Now I know a bunch of children of God today. I can look out there and they're in the world. It breaks my heart sometimes. I know they've prayed all night many times. I know they chopped down many trees. Help cast out many devils. Yes. And done many wonderful things for God. But they're out there in the world now because God didn't work fast enough for them. Jesus. I would say he that endureth to the end. That's the one that's going to be saved. God has proven himself to us, saints, over and over and over again. Why is he going to fail you now? Why is his word going to lie now? Why is he not going to prove himself to you again? His word says, his word does not lie. He's bound by his word. When David, he got ready to go out there, praise the Lord. When he slung that flame shot, I have no doubt in my mind that he was certain. Yes, sir. He was going to hit the top. Yes, sir. Yeah. I have no doubt in my mind 
when he slung that, that he had proven it so many times before. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times when a basketball player, when you, you know, when you're out there playing around, when, when that shot leaves your fingers, you can just, sometimes you just turn around and run the other way. <laughs> because you know it's going down. <laughs> I believe that's where when David, when he slung it, he, oh. I got this. I got this. <laughs> and I know that when it hit his target, he was certain. There was no doubt. You know, I believe that, that, that God's looking for people that when that prayer leaves your lips, I believe you can walk away and say, no doubt. It's going to hit his target. I believe he's looking for people. Praise the Lord. I tell you, we can take David as our example. David didn't just Pick up a slain shot that he wasn't familiar with. What is this? Mm-hmm. He was intimately familiar. I'm sure he probably made it himself. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he probably went out there, mm-hmm. chose the right levels, and had the right holster. He had it just right, had it just the right length. He probably played around with it a while, and target practice a while. He knew. You know why? Because that was his last blood, that slain shot. Mm-hmm. That's how he ate. That slingshot was how he defended himself. Yeah. That slingshot was how he fed his family. Mm-hmm. That slingshot was how he defended his sheep yeah. from the predators that was out there. That's right. That slingshot was something that he used in his everyday life. Yes, so you use yours every day. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, come on. Go ahead on. Do we use our slingshot? Come on. Do we craft it? Do we take care in looking at it and all in it? I'm sure he took all and made sure it didn't dry out. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's flexible just right because he knew at a moment's time there could be a predator yes, over there when the sheep got, yeah. got all rattled around in a moment's time. The devil may pop up where he had to reach in there and get that stone and sling it out there and slay that beast and try to come in yeah. to his sheep. Yeah. He was prepared all the time. He's prepared. Go ahead. He had that slain shot. That's right. And he was ready to use it at a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. Not just because he just expected it to be ready. He made sure it was ready. Mm-hmm. He put some effort into it. He put some time yes, into it. He put some, my God, he stayed up sometime and, and listened to it. And if it got a little dry, he done something with it. Mm-hmm. You hear me, church? Go ahead. But I have no doubt, once that stone left his hand, he knew yeah. that it was going to meet its time. Yeah. He knew. Because he would used it so many times before. Yeah. Improving it over and over. Over again. And tell him how many meals he had eaten because he had that slingshot ready. You know, tell him how many times he fed himself because he had a slingshot ready. Go ahead, You know, tell him how many times he saved one of his sheep out there from a coyote or some yeah. kind of creature out there trying to get him. No doubt how many times he, he saved his sheep because his slingshot. His slingshot. Is your slingshot ready? Is your slingshot flexible? Have you been target practicing with it? Are you sure when you put a stone in it next time, are you sure when you get down close with God that your target is going to be hit when you release it? Have you proven your slingshot? Have you proven what God, i tell you what, today we got to prove what God has given us. It's not just, the Bible said, you don't take this light and put it on a bush. Come on. Come on. You got to take it, put it out there with a the word and see it. God didn't intend for us to take this wonderful revelation of Jesus that we have and just hold it to ourselves. But we got to go out into the world. He commissioned every creature, 
Every man and woman that has accepted Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, He commissioned you to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. But you gotta have your slingshot. Go ahead, brother. You got to be proving it. You got to be target practice. You got it's got to be flexible. It's got to be able. Whenever you sling it up, it can't break because it's got you twined on. You got to have a sack full of stones. You can't reach in there and go to fight the battle. You ain't got. Wait a minute. Oh, oh. Might not be no group around. There might not be no place to get no stones around. Oh, brother. Oh, Bible says be instant. In sea. Out of sea. We got to be ready all the time. Every day. Every night. You never know somebody allowed to call you. Church at 2 o'clock in the morning, brother. I need you right now. I, I need you right now, my brother. You got to pray for me. If you don't pray for me, I'm going to blow my brains out. You don't think people respect your walk with God? But somebody, if you're the only phone number that can come to their mind, they're going to call you. And you better have some stones in your sack. You better have your slingshot flexed up and ready. You better be uh, target practice somewhere. You better be proving God somewhere, some way, somehow. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, have mercy. Prove that which is good and acceptable. Will of God. Perfect. Will of God. Amen. Let me tell you something. God's will is perfect all the time. Amen. It don't matter. There's no gray areas to his will today. Either you're in his will or you're not. I'm going to say this. Get ready. I'm going to get out of the way. But this morning I preached a lot of going home from church Wednesday night. And something come to me about the flesh. You know, Peter, he, Jesus told him, you know, that he was getting ready to go to the cross. Yeah. He was telling him how the horrible things that he was about to suffer. He told him how he was going to be crucified and all the things. And, you know, Peter stood up. He stood up with his defensive ways. He said, no, Lord, they ain't going to take you. I'll fight him. Mm -hmm. He stood up and he told Jesus, he said, Lord, not you. They ain't going to do that to you. Yeah. But that was, I'll tell you something, the love that you have for another human being. You know, Peter loved Jesus as a human being. Yeah. Because he loved him. It's they had slept together, ate together, they fought the devil. They'd done so many things together for quite some time. And Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross. About three years he'd been with him. Every waking minute he'd been with him. He was ready to fight and die for Jesus Christ, the human being. But you know, Jesus looked at him and he told him, Peter, he said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou art an offense to me. Don't let your love for your loved one. Don't let your love for their flesh stop you from doing the will of God. Don't let your love for your mother, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your friend stop you from witnessing to him. Because Peter was going to let his love for Jesus, the Bible says Jesus was a man approved by God. Peter loved the man Jesus. And he was ready to die for the man Jesus. 
but his love for the man Jesus hindered the will of God. His love for that flesh, that man's name, that was Jesus, hindered the will of God. And Jesus wasn't going to have none of that. And Jesus told Peter, you get thee behind me, say, I got to go down. I was born to die. This is the will of God for me to And I thought about that. I said, Lord, don't let my fleshly love my fleshly love, or whatever it is. Man, woman, boy, girl, hard truck, house, land, or life in general. Don't let that love for that thing enter your way. Don't let it hinder your way. Even Peter, as much as he, and he would die for him. He took and cut the man's ear off and when they come got him. And he looked at Peter and said, shall I not drink? Shall I not drink this cup yes, from this cup? That's right. Flesh today, in many ways, this old heart is the strongest. Who's going to, the Bible says, the heart is the center. Who will know it? Your heart will lie to you. Your heart will make you get out of the will of God. Your love for your church brother, sister, even. Your brother, sister, your mama, daddy. So many things. The fleshly love. It don't seem wrong. Peter's flesh, love for Jesus to you and me. It didn't seem wrong because we do it every day. But it wasn't God's will. God's will supersedes all love. His will, His will supersedes everything. And you know, when we're in God's will, we're all right. We're all right. We ain't got to worry about it. If we're in the will of God, it may look like somebody may want to give you some honor. But the Bible says, prove what is that acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah. You've proven it before. You've proven the will of God before, saints. You've proven it so many times. Or prove it again. That will was perfect before. Do you want to be here today? Prove it again. Prove that will of God again. And I promise you, he won't let you down. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I feel the spirit in this place today. Hallelujah. today, once we're in the perfect will of God, that when we release our slingshot, it's going to hit its target. It's going to hit the target. I believe it's going to hit the target. I believe I, I've already seen it hit, hit the target. Brother Brian, I know it'll hit the target. You know why? Because I've been practicing. I've been target shooting. I've been I've been doing a lot. You know, I, I help them, my, my baby's T-ball team. I help them out there sometimes. You know, it looked like a ragtag bunch when we first started. They couldn't catch. A lot of them couldn't throw. They couldn't do all kinds of stuff. But you know what? We kept on practicing. But after a while, they started hitting the target. 
It went to prove how to throw that thing. We got to do the same thing, see? Right. This is something we got to practice. We got to, we got to practice this. Yeah. We got to practice the will of God. But you know, I tell you today, I ain't where I used to be. I ain't where I want to be. But I'm sure trying to get there. I'm sure all oh, doing everything I can do to get there. But I tell you, I ain't satisfied where I'm at. There's something to stay satisfied where you're at. You get complacent. You're pretty good. You know, some, most people are satisfied with pretty good. It ain't no time to be pretty good. It's not no time to be pretty all right. It's time to press on. Press on. Press on. You got to press toward the mark. What mark? That, that Jesus mark. Not my call. What God has for us. Use what you, praise the Lord. Use what you got the Lord to add to you. Practice a little bit more. And where you was hitting two out of ten, you started hitting six out of ten. Nine out of ten. Ten out of ten. Perfect. And accept the will of God. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. In times like these, we need revival. In times like these, we need the Bible. Be very sure Tonight, 
today, Lord. God, to stir up our desire, Jesus. God, to stir up our will. Lord, to get closer to you. Lord, you said, draw nigh to me and I draw nigh to you. Lord, I believe today, Lord, this message. Oh, Lord, to, to stir us up, Jesus. To let us know, Lord, that God, we got to do something today. We got to prove that which is your perfect will, Lord. God, we got to prove today. God, that God, all that it worked before, Lord. All that, God, that you've shown us that you can do before, Lord. We got to get back to the old land, Lord. We got to get back to that way, Lord. That, Lord, you said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. And I'm the life. You said, no man to come to the Father except by me, through me. Oh, Lord, I thank you today. Lord, let us get our sling shot out, Lord. Let us get it ready, Lord. Let us practice, Lord. Let us pray. Let us be sharpened. Lord, we focus our dedication, Lord. God, oh God, let us get in a place, Lord. God, the way we can seek you, Lord. Lord, where we can let go of the world and turn off the TV and turn off the telephone. Lord, get away somewhere with you, Lord. God, and sharpen our skills, Lord. Hone our skills and target practice, Lord. Lord, and be sure, Lord. Be sure that I anchor, Lord. But be sure, Lord, that that rock that we put in our slingshot, Lord, that stone, Lord, that is sure, Lord, Lord, that it will reach its target, Lord. Lord, and I thank you today. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for your spirit, Lord. I thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for your holy anointing, Lord. Lord, not because we deserve it, Lord. Not because we're qualified or unqualified. Lord, not because we've done something or we're righteous or holy, Lord. But just because you're merciful and because you're God. Hello, oh, hallelujah.
But now she done tested her skill. Yeah. Yeah. She done sharpened her slingshot. She just bear right off in it. Hallelujah in the hand. Just right off in the middle. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what it takes some blessed assurance. But you know, ain't no way for us to be sure in our, in our skills in God unless we hone them and work and try and try to do something to sharpen them and get closer to God. He said, draw nigh to me. I draw nigh to you. And something about that presence of God, when it draws nigh to you, well, what greater confidence can you have? And I'll tell you what, you feel like every time you sling your slingshot, it's going to hit the top. But you feel the presence of God. We all been there. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You've been walking with God so you feel like you, you want to try to walk on water sometimes. I don't know about you, but I've tried. I've been praying. Thought I was close to God, trying to step out there. I said, Lord, one of these days when I step out there, I'm going to feel something. Yeah. Yeah. Feel something. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, when I was tested, Ain't nothing wrong with testing. But I still believe one of these days I'm going to step out there and it's going to feel, I'm going to feel something. I'm walk. And I'm going to test what is that good and perfect will of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 